Hey there, everybody. This is Mark Boyle. I am the Prepper Guy, and I just wanted to do a, a quick little podcast, um, mainly because <laughs> the other day I had uh, commented on a, 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 a drawing by Cartoon Man, and I was pretty harsh, I guess, in my response, because I'm just so fucking sick and fed up of the, uh, the wear a mask, don't wear a mask mantra going on. And uh, one of my other friends said, uh, gee, how do you really feel? Because uh, nah, my comment was pretty harsh. It's like, you know, I'm I'm tired of this shit. You know, I have, I have a friend, uh, you know, a real one, like somebody I meet at the ball games all the time when my wife's playing softball. And he's a respiratory therapist. And he was telling me that, you know, this whole shortage of rooms and now they're even busing people from you know our town in arizona to new mexico because we have a an icu uh, bed shortage and and i'm thinking well that's that's really fucking weird because i mean we've we've suffered you know 75 car pileups on the freeway and, and never had an icu bed shortage in one hour you know, they somehow they managed to pull this shit off. And I was like, well, you know, I talked to him some time ago and, and, and come to find out um, ventilators don't help people with COVID-19, especially people that are really in dress and, you know, fucking dying. He said, he said like, it doesn't help because um, it's not that they're having a problem breathing or taking in oxygen into their lungs. It's not like their lungs are, you know, having a problem and, and not inflating and deflating. It's that at the membrane, the oxygen isn't taking and going into the blood because of the virus. And therefore, the brain is starving for oxygen, not fucking air or breaths of air, oxygen. The O2 thing that keeps us alive. So he he was saying he goes you know all you can do for somebody really with severe COVID um, is to put them in a regular room and and take care of them and maybe give them um, some of the treatments that are out there like the chloroquine and that and, and hopefully make them comfortable and. And, and put an oxygen tube in them. So as they breathe, maybe there's more concentrated of oxygen. But he goes, a ventilator's not going to help. And he said, so we have a piece of equipment at, at some of the hospitals that are basically like a kidney dialysis machine to where what it does is it uh, literally puts oxygen into the blood, just like dialysis takes toxins out of the blood and, and it's done at the level of blood, you know, through this machine. He said there's only a few of them in the, in the entire state, and, and they're kind of expensive, and he knows how to to do that. You know, that's what he's trained in, in that piece of equipment. He goes, we only have a few. So he goes, it's, it's not an ICU or, you know, bed shortage. He goes, this is all just a fucking game. And, and he goes, an N95 mask will only do so much. And you have to change them every 10, 15 minutes or it'll give you, um, you know, pleurisy because you're breathing in contaminated air that you've breathed out. So it builds up and creates like more of a breeding ground for any kind of virus in that mask. And, and he said it doesn't do shit for when you breathe out because there's a little valve or on some of them where it just goes out and, and and it's not, you know, really filtering out viruses, but it helps. And he said, we, you know, we wear them in, in surgery and stuff because you're, you're leaning over someone's exposed body. And if you cough or, or spittle comes out of your mouth, you don't want that going into their open body. So, there's a reason for personal protection equipment and stuff like that. But unless everybody in America wears a fucking mask all the time and changes it every 15, 20 minutes, it's, it's not going to help. So it, it's, if it's, it's one of those things that government always does. It's like, you know, if 
they did this and it was fully recognized and and implemented nationwide it still wouldn't work because there's not enough equipment um, there's not enough n95 masks uh, for everyone to be wearing them all 300 and some million americans that are wandering around changing it every you know 30 40 minutes when they're out in public and talking to people and says so just it wouldn't work it's it's like i told a, a highway patrol one time when i was in a traffic survival school you know and they're talking about at a stoplight you should stay far enough back to where you can see the car in front of you's tires on the on the pavement now it's like well you know that's all cute and wonderful but he goes you know i said if we all did that at an intersection where I live during rush hour, the traffic wouldn't be backed up to the next traffic light. It would be backed up a mile. So if we all woke up one day and started doing that and it was fully realized, that's when everyone would go, this doesn't work. So why are we doing this with masks and all this? I mean, you know, and, and so... I, I was like, you know, tell, you know, is that what I really think? Well, fuck no, that's not what I really think. What I really think is this bullshit's been going on for uh, you know, five, six months since March, April, May, June, July, oh, almost five months, you know, pushing a half a year mark. We all know, anyone with two fucking brain cells left over from high school knows that this is all about the election. The impeachment didn't work and all the other bullshit didn't work. So now they're trying to hurt the economy, which they have done, you know, and, and, and that's why I was so harsh on, uh, you know, that one comment was just like enough, you know, fuck, you know, I go to work, my business is slow. We've closed down to three days a week and, and it's only one of us there and, and there's no measures on my schedule, nothing. Everyone's just like afraid and, and yes, be afraid, be very afraid. But the, the, the fear mongering from the media, you know, they're always accusing, you know, Republicans of fear mongering. It's like, hey, fuck you people. You know, you're the ones that are whipping up this fear mongering in, in Americans so where they're afraid to step out of their house. And then when, when you try to apply some common sense to it and they go, well, you know, if everybody would just social distance and stay six feet apart, you know, we'd be okay. But these protesters, that's okay. Not one case of COVID because of all these protesters. Well, is it, is it because their skin color? Because biochemically, we're all the same. So the, if I'm going to get it, so would they. I don't care if they're mad and anger is like warding off the virus or whatever the fuck it is. Or just maybe it's it's the you know, the burning of buildings that, you know, creates so much heat that it kills the virus. Well, you know, it's all fucking horseshit. So now it's like I need to maybe not go to church if I was a church going person and maybe not even sing because, oh, my God. But I can go out and chant and burn shit down and, and, and have 200,000 people out there in town square screaming and yelling about defunding the police and how unjust we fucking treated this group of people or that group of people and that's okay so i look at it and and mathematically and statistically and you know doctor wise and whatever you can read and look at and, and, and statistics it, it's bullshit so you look at it and you go okay the spanish flu you know which was the h1n1 type of coronavirus you know in 1918 i don't, I don't kill killed millions of Americans in, in a year and a half, you know, almost two years, millions. We're not even close to that number. And, and so the difference was between the Spanish flu and H1N1. And now is Trump was the president now, and they're going to fucking use that to screw the economy because things are going really good. And the, and the Republicans are doing a good job, uh, you know, well, at least president Trump is doing a good job on the economy and joblessness and all that. And so the the, the the dementia crats, you know, with Joe Biden, look at that and go, well, there's no way we can win up against this. It's, it's just, you know, he's doing a very good job. Well, rather than just let America get on a good fitting so we have a bunch of money so when they finally get elected, they can implement their socialist programs because socialism only works with other people's money. 
So you would think that they would leave Trump alone, you know, to come up with some money. But uh, that's another phone. So it's kind of got a cool ringtone to it. And it says potential spam. <laughs> Whatever. A little background music there for you. So when you when you look at the all the stuff from the old viruses and, and flus, you know, it was the same contagion. It was it was still a pandemic. You know, the Spanish flu was a pandemic, a worldwide pandemic. And and, and we didn't shut the economy down. So the, the, the Democrats just want to slow the roll. And, and they're not going to stop Trump from getting reelected because there's just too many smart Americans looking around going, hey, you can bitch and whine all you want, but, you know, the economy was doing really good and everyone had a job until you motherfuckers screwed it all up. So that's what I really think is that the numbers don't line up. It's all just bullshit and, and and anyone you know with third third grade education that can kind of look at math and go well let's see if i had three apples and you took one i would have two can do the math and go you know what this 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 covid thing isn't any worse than anything else so why are we freaking out when when obama was president with h1n1 you know more people died than now uh, everything was fine. Everyone was happy. They weren't defunding the police and rioting and freaking the fuck out. And then you got, you know, George Floyd, he got, you know, shot by a cop. And so everyone was mad, but none of this has anything to do with that. And and it's not like he was a pillar of the fucking community, you know? So it's, it's just like, you know, a lot of people in the, you know, black leadership are saying, why are we um, rallying around a guy that was a criminal? Why do we always support the least common denominator? You know, it's like, so it, that's all bullshit. So when I just look at it, I just, I think to myself, you know what? Fuck all you guys. I have a life to live. And obviously, you know, they're making it very hard to live. I live in a town where they're, they're trying to, you know, be fair and not enforce masks and not enforce all the social distancing and letting people work. Cause it's a small town and, you know, they don't want to go broke, <laughs> but, you know, now we have, you know, Walmart and Circle K and all these, you know, stores that are corporations going, oh, well, you can't come in without a mask. Well, you know, me and my wife decided, well, we'll just fucking go to Safeway. We'll give them the money because they haven't flipped out and become fucking morons. But, you know, Walmart can do it because it's, it's a corporation, but the majority of the, the shareholders are family. So they can be all mindless dump bucks. But if you're a corporation like Target or any of these big corporations with shareholders, you're doing your shareholders an injustice by, you know, hurting sales and, and bottom line with these stupid mass things. Now, granted, you know, you could walk out on stage and any show on TV, drop your pants and take a shit right on stage, live TV, and you would offend 99% of Americans, but the other 1% would be a massively huge fan base. So they're playing those statistics, and they know that they're going to lose a little money, but there's enough gullible sheeple that are still going to go to Walmart with their mask on, and and, and it's not going to be like they're going to lose a lot of money because they'll they'll make it up on internet sales and, and and maybe, you know, 10% of their customers will stop coming in for a while, you know. So it's, it's you know, it's not going to bankrupt them. But I've decided, fuck them, you know. I, I, and, you know, I, I don't like Jeff Bezos, but, you know, I, I order tons of shit online. I'm not a fan of Lowe's and Home Depot, but I buy a ton of shit from them because we're remodeling and re-adding onto our house. So, you know, you, you, you kind of have to play the cards you're dealt. You know, we do a lot of local business. The Ace store here is locally owned, so that kind of helps and stuff. But, I, I, you know, that's how I feel. I feel we're being fucked. This is all just a big setup, and it has nothing to do with your health or my health. It has to do with the government 
and the players at high up, you know, the real puppet masters are doing something like I talked about and, 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 you know, last sucker standing and, you know, agenda 21 versus the Krispy Kreme donuts or whatever I called that one. You know, it's like, there's, there's, there's something going on. We're kept in the dark, you know, so we've been, you know, put in a round room and told to go set in the corner and we're running around like, you know, fucking morons trying to find the corner of a round room. And, uh, and instead of logically looking at it and going, well, any space along that wall is a corner. If I look at it the other way around and just set the fuck down. No, we're freaking out and we're running around crying and whining and mask. And, you know, should I wear a mask? Shouldn't I wear a mask? Every time I say something on Facebook about not wearing a mask, one of the girls on there, I know she's always got to throw in her two fucking cents about how, how important it is that we should all wear masks. And it's just like enough already. Prove it scientifically beyond reasonable doubt, you know, because Fauci, one minute's mask, don't wear a mask, wear a mask, CDC's wear a mask, don't wear a mask. And when Fauci's saying wear a mask, uh, CDC's saying don't wear a mask. And World Health Organization, they were all fucking crazy. And then we quit dealing with them. And then yet we're still playing off their numbers and their, you know, um, projected death rates and everything, even though we've decided that the World Health Organization fucking morons you know so i just look at it as a as you know it's not clear it's muddy so i'm i'm pretty well sick of all this bullshit and uh you know i don't know what to do no that's you know I, that comment on on facebook was not how i feel it was a reaction to how pissed i am and screaming out loud, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore, and saying enough is enough, motherfucker. And it just happened to be some guy that's a, a goddamn comedian. Well, you know, there's a lot of comedians out there that are doing good things, like, you know, um, what's his name, Adam Carolla, you know, talking about some of this shit. So I, I you know, I'm not going to give him the excuse that it's just all fair and love, war, and comedy. You know, fuck him. He made a bad joke, and I was pissed about it, and I'm sick of it. Just fucking sick of it. So how I really feel, um, no one's going to do shit about it. We're going to continue to run around and, and, and follow this crap um, and, until uh, we're all sucked into the giant vacuum cleaner and, you know, ruin. You know, a lot of people are, are commenting that, you know, it's like, well, this will all be over in November. It's like, no, in November, we might have glued this China vase back together again, but it's still going to be all fucked up. See, things are happening that can't be undone. You can't unsee certain things. You can't unscramble an egg. You can't fix things that when the masses are so capitulating fucking sheeple that you've you've done damage to you know it's like the the straw that broke the camel's back or any one of those things it's like eventually you know when you keep drinking from the the cup of freedom and allowing these things to happen eventually the cup isn't half empty or half full it's just fucking empty and these things are going on you know um what will it be after the election well then they're going to start trying to impeach trump again and, and you know that's all fucking minor shit but you know what's happened is we know that 56 sick 50 uh, 50 or 60 percent of americans will wear a mask because they're told to and and it's not like they're wearing a mask for scientific or medical reasons they're just doing it because they were told to because the math and the science is all over the fucking map as we've discussed so there's there's not any logic to it it's just because they were told to do it and i look on the prepper community and stuff and and uh, i just i see a, a capitulation on beliefs and patriotism that's just fucking astounding you know and and one of my friends that posted something about the Saxons and, you know, the, when the Saxons began to hate, you know, and 
and, and I kind of read it to believe, you know, to mean that, you know, for now we, we sit there and grin and bear it. But underneath, a lot of people are getting really pissed the fuck off. I'm one of them. And so what will happen when that shot heard around the world goes off? You know, because, you know, whether most black people believe what's going on with Black Lives Matter and this, you know, bullshit, I believe it's less than 1% of the blacks in America believe all this shit that they're saying about America and reparations and all that. Well, that would, that would leave maybe 100, 200,000, which are most of them at the rallies and pissing and moaning. The rest of them don't give a fuck. But what's going to happen is these seeds of contention are being sown. And when it goes to harvest and there's, there's a, a riot, a real riot or a civil war or a confrontation that goes nationally because everybody's allowed themselves to be so thoroughly divided that innocent people will die on both sides of all colors and everything. Because, you know, I know a lot of Hispanic families, they believe in, in uh, immigration and borders the same as you or I born in America, you know, white people, you know, they, they come here and they don't want their hard earned money because they work hard. They become Americans. They go through the, the bullshit to become Americans. And then here comes the, 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 one of their friends that just skips across the border and gets all this free shit that's paid for with their taxes, paid for with my taxes. So the majority of all people in America, white, black, Hispanic, brown, yellow, whatever color or origin or race they are, I would say a large 80%, which is a, a majority, um, feel that everything's fine and, and we just need to fix a few things in America and maybe get back to some more constitutional principles. Not going to call it Republican or Democrat, just I'm going to call it conservative or, or, or liberal. It's just they just want freedom of speech. They want to un, you know, believe that their privacy is protected and they're not being spied on. And they, yeah, just little minor tweaks like that. They they would like to be able to buy their own health insurance, you know, and across state lines and get a good deal, just like auto insurance and all. They're just Americans like you and I. They just want to maybe save up enough money and add on to their house or 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 plan for a barbecue this weekend or next weekend or go for a camping trip with their kids teach their sons or daughters how to fish or whatever they're just fucking normal people and then you have the other 20 percent lunatic fringe out there just freaking out and 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 so what i'm saying is when when that shit fucking hits the fan so many innocent people are going to are going to be hurt and, and killed and, and suffer the consequences of this 20% of the fucking moron race out there. And, and so it's going to be sad. But trust me, when the Saxons begin to hate and people get pissed, you then, then all of a sudden it becomes, because of the media lying to us, it will become race against race, nationality against nationality. And, and, and you will have to pick a side because, you know, you might believe your family are all batshit fucking crazy. But if it comes down to a, a fight or an argument, you're going to you're going to stand on the side of your family. And it takes a very strong individual to, to walk it back and go, wait a fucking minute. You're wrong, too. We're both wrong. Let's stop before our entire family is wiped out like the. The fucking Hatfields and the McCoys. That takes that takes a level of character that I don't see in America. It takes people having a moral compass that's pointing true north, let's just say, that haven't been bullshitted by the Overton window being jerked left and right for 70, 80, 90 years. And just look at the world as a, as a, as a good person and go, this is wrong. I am not going to take your side. I'm not going to fight against you, but I'm going to fight to keep you from doing the wrong thing. 
and, it, and it's not going to happen. When it, when it becomes a, a revolution, you know, it, it, it becomes whatever the history writers say it was, just like the Civil War. You know, I mean, if you truly, truly study the Civil War, it was more of a war of northern aggression. The South were pissed. Sure, slavery was an issue. But the only issue with slavery was because the South wanted to expand slavery into the territories, which was federally ruled by the federal government, the territories. So they wanted to use slaves to build up the territories, which would have given the South more control over the territory, and, and the North didn't like it, had to dick to do with actual slavery because slavery was being slowly ended with the abolitionists since the constitution was written a lot of people wanted slavery to be abolished but they knew they would never get the the constitution ratified and they felt that the that the you know the constitution was the omelet they wanted to create and if they had to break some eggs then they were willing to do it but they always knew in the back of their mind we're going to take it step by step we need to get this country and a constitution where we have freedom and liberty and we're not socialist or a monarchy or an oligarchy so let's do that and then we'll work toward this well once they created the constitution then it became ratified and it became a legal thing and so now it took all the people to work together to end slavery, and that's when the division became apparent. So they couldn't work on it. It was kind of a catch-22. It was like damned if you do and damned if you don't, because if you don't ratify the Constitution, then we could slip into monarchy or oligarchy or any other form of tyrannical government that's been throughout history for thousands of years. But the minute we do that, then we have to follow the will of the people. And a lot of them don't, don't want to do away with slavery. So it was a catch-22. They took the high road and decided, let's get this done and off the table to where we're protected on a world stage um, from becoming these other things. And we can guard against you know monarchy and, and oligarchy and, and stuff or, you know, at least get the foundation laid and then yes we will need the will of the people to build what's on top of that foundation and let's hope they do the right thing so it was really it was a catch-22 but you know we've done really good and, and and i believe honestly that most americans black or white or mexicans or asians or whatever feel that the ends maybe didn't always justify the means but they're willing to live with it i you know like um, michelle malkin says you know i i received a very good education even though my parents were in internment camps during you know when we declared war on japan she's like you know i came out of it alive my parents came out of it alive and okay you know we didn't lose that much and when you really consider how much it helped the country not have to be looking behind it and watching their sex it was kind of worth it was it right well, but probably not was slavery right to leave in the constitution probably not but eventually when you look at the the, the outcome People were trying to free the slaves way before the Civil War, way before the Civil War. And, and a lot of the people in the South were abolitionists too. And, and, and they were just fighting that same uphill battle from years gone by, trying to do something about it. But the Civil War itself was fought over you know, money and stuff. The North had a lot of money. They were being taxed in the South. That money was being taken to Washington and, and the, the, the North, and they were building, you know, ports and harbors and, and, and uh, what do they call them? Lighthouses and all these things, which were, you know, it's kind of like now you tax a bunch of people for internet and then your state don't have internet because they decided to spend it. Now, fuck you, was exactly how it was with the North and the South. And they were like, wait a minute, we have this, you know, shipping and stuff and all the fucking cotton and shit that we're fucking making is going to you and your factories in the North. 
and, and we need some ports. We need something. But they, the North knew that if they kept their their boot on their neck in the South, that they would have control over them. And eventually the North got pissed off and went, hey, you know what? Fuck you. But, you know, Lincoln once said, whether I free one slave or none, doesn't matter to me. I just want to save the Union. And in his warped way, that was his way of saving the Union because it had gone to war. But, you know, he was a buck up, too, when it came to his policies, probably about as bad as George Bush Jr. and Sr., you know, for, you know, doing all the wrong things and for the right reason, you know. So when we go into this civil war, the second civil war, C2 or whatever we're going to fucking call it. Um, well, you know, it, the, the lines and what really caused it and what really happened because of it will be determined by who writes the history. You know, most people will be dead, you know, 70, 80 years from now. And, and then then the history will be written about what happened in 2020 or 2021 or 2022 or whenever the fuck that the, the thing goes off. But it's a time bomb. And, and unfortunately, we, the people, you and I, you and me, are allowing the media to lie to us. You know, and I, I try to, you know, do this podcast. A lot of people try to tell the media to go fuck off. And, and we try to watch Fox News, but that's a corporation that's being pulled to the left also. You know, so, you know, they're, they're fucking over Tucker Carlson. One of the last sane voices, you know, Sean Hannity's kind of moved a little bit to the left. And, you know, and, and Glenn Beck left and then he went off the reservation or off the map. God, sorry, I called it a reservation. So fucking politically incorrect and fucked everything all up you know and became an idiot you know and, and so of the, the hundred let's say news agencies and media agencies there's more than that but out of the hundred let's say one or two are semi-conservative so we are allowing this division to take place we are allowing them to lay the the foundation to this civil war that's going to cause white against black, Mexican against Asian, or whatever they want to do, however they want to play it, because they got their big board game out there, and they're like, eh. you know, and, and, and unfortunately, we, the people, have nothing against, I have nothing against black people. I, I have nothing against Mexican people. Actually, nothing but respect for some of the Mexican culture I've seen in my life from where I was born and raised and stuff. Uh, black people, I, nothing against them. I mean, once you strip everyone's skin off, we're all the same. You know, health and medical research has proven that there is no difference between any of us. So it's just what we see, skin color. And, and, and we've allowed them to, the media and our corrupt politicians, to play the game to when, when that shot is heard around the world, the first thing the media will say is, a white guy killed a black person. What are you going to do about it? And it, you know what? It, it might be an Asian shoots a Mexican. The media will find the worst case scenario, and they will trigger that war. And we, the suckers, the fodder for this bullshit, will not have a clue what we're doing, but battle lines will be drawn, and we will take the bait, and we will have to choose a side, and we will have to fight. And many innocents will die if Americans can't stop fucking driveling all over Facebook, put on their fucking thinking cap and read a goddamn book and i'm not talking about the bible obviously because i just said damn it the lord's name in vain you know fucking learn are you so goddamn stupid in america that we can't just figure this out Granted, we're busy. We work our asses off. And now, because of the fucking COVID thing, we're all trying to just maybe not go broke. So the, it's a game. And, and, and we need to learn 
how we're going to play it. Because as long as we play by their rules, it's like letting the, the opposition lawyer write the contract that's going to surrender your fucking rights is exactly what we're doing. So fight the media. Tell Facebook to fuck off. You know, if they block you, good. I've been banned so many times, I don't even remember because half the time I'm not on Facebook. But I'm sure I pissed off Mark a few times by calling him a little pencil dick. So how, how, do, you, how do you fight Facebook? Well, you can't fight them in a frontal assault. Just walk away. Just refuse to show up to the game as a fan or as a player. Just walk the fuck away. I put shit on Facebook because I just like watching people get pissed off. Just like the cartoon, man. Got them all pissed off. It's all butthurt. One of the admins said, well, that was kind of harsh. You know, don't have to be a dick. It's like, you know what? Fuck all of you. Whiny ass bitches. You know? So walk away from social media. You know, I have five websites. I have no idea what Google Analytics is, nor do I give a shit what Google thinks about my content. Because I know if they really looked at it, they would hate it because I'm an asshole. So Playing by their rules doesn't do me any good anyway, does it? So I rely on people like you. Say, hey, go listen to Mark's podcast. He's one crazy motherfucker. He's stupid. He's wrong. He's dumb. But he's passionate. And he believes that we can save America. You and I can save this country. That's right. You and I can probably save this country if we elect good sheriffs or we elect good people. You know, I've said this. I, I mean, I've been... I've been fighting the city over my remodel since I broke ground on the fucking thing. I've been fighting, let me rephrase that, the city for almost a year. Donald Trump has never sent me a letter going, hey, Mark, why are you pissing off the mayor or the city council or planning and zoning? In fact, my senator has never once called me and said, hey, Mark, why are you pissing off planning and zoning? I've never heard from Ducey, my, uh, my governor, go, hey, Mark, what the fuck's wrong with you? You didn't get a permit. No, you know who's fucking with me? The local city government and planning and zoning. That's who's fucking with me. So who do, why do I give a fuck who the president of the United States is when I'm fighting a battle to add on to my house and enjoy my private property? Because, see, the president just does certain things, and our president's doing a damn fine job. I didn't care when Obama was president. As long as he didn't fuck shit up too bad, we'll move on as a country. He's the landscaper. Might kill a tree or two, but he's not going to tell me what color to paint the inside of my house. Because that's what the president sees. The fucking landscaper. He deals with international shit outside the country. And he's a spokesman for we the people. That's it. That's his authority. He can make executive orders to enforce existing laws. You see how it works? So he's not my problem. The governor and the senators and the representatives are not my fucking problem. Who's my problem is all these motherfuckers that live right where I live that got elected somehow and then became tyrants. Thank God we have a mayor that everyone seems to hate that just said, we're not going to do this mass thing. And, and, and then, and then, the, the, then the, some of the other city things that, you know, got together the, the, the council and voted to not have a parade. So we had a parade anyway. It just wasn't you know, sanctioned by the city. So we didn't kiss the fucking city's ring. You know who was in that parade? Uh, the councilman that voted against blocking the parade and the mayor. So good on him and good on them. We had a parade. It was great. It was wonderful. So, you know, the fight starts with you and me. You know, start fighting locally. Get good sheriffs. Get good city council. Get your fucking freedom back and, and, and start there. So that way when the state or the county goes, hey, let's go over to this town and fuck them over, they'll go, no, don't go over there. They have a sheriff and, and a county attorney that will fuck you up. So stay away from them because they're all a bunch of rednecks. And they, they 
fucking read the Bible. Go over here. Go go fuck with them. See? And and so then you have strength in your community. It makes it harder for the county and the state to fuck with you. That phone call, to interrupt my whole fucking line of reasoning, was my wife telling me that now Safeway also requires a mask to go shop in their store. You, you know, I guess you could still go to a bar, though, and it'd be all right. But they, they are allowing for medical reasons. So if you tell them that <clears throat> you can't wear a mask because of medical reasons, then they can't ask what that reason is because that's HEPA laws and whatever violations. So they will let you now see Walmart never said that if you tell them it's medical reasons why you're not wearing a mask, then they'll let you in. Whereas Safeway said that. So there's a little out there, and I'm not above lying and telling them, hey, I have fucking medical condition. Actually, I had asthma when I was a kid. So I could pretty easily get pleurisy by wearing a mask too much. I mean, I was coughing quite a bit just working under the house the last couple of days with insulation and stuff and wearing the, the same mask because I can't buy any new ones because everyone's fucking out of them because there's a COVID crisis, I guess. So, you know, it, it does affect me. So I, I don't mind, um, you know, lying to them and tell them I can't do that. I got a, a problem. But I got, you know, I got a few things on my shopping list here, so I, I still got to go out. Ace hasn't required that, even though everyone in Ace wears a mask. You know, so I don't understand it because, you know, we've had this discussion on, on, on Facebook that, you know, if mask worked, then why social distancing? And if social distancing works, then why wear a mask? And since both of them are bullshit, why are we even talking about it? Is my final conclusion. Um, so it, it's all just, you know, horseshit. Um, again, more and more to where uh, we're being fucked over um, by the man. And like I said, and then the media, you know, amplifies the bullshit and, and pumps it out there. And then we continue to watch it. You know, granted, you know, most uh, brain dead fuck ups are going to watch, you know, MSNBC and CNN and all the media. And then that's going to give them their point of reference for life. And, and a few people try to watch, you know, Fox and Tucker Carlson and a little bit of Hannity and, and get their news online from maybe Breitbart and stuff. But you, as you, you know, the more you, the more you pay attention and, and look, the more you see that um, all the conservative outlets or real news outlets are, are becoming more and more skewed toward buying into the bullshit. Fuck, I don't know. And, and so... You know, like Sean Hannity last night was talking about he believes that we should all wear a mask and he tells all his friends to do that and all that. And it's like, yeah, okay, then I guess we should wear masks like they do in Japan and China. Just all the time, whether there's a pandemic or not, just fucking wear a mask. Because that's what it'll it'll become. You know, it'll it'll be the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So let's just all, you know, Fucking stockpile up on respirators and N95. So when we go, you know, walking our dog, we can wear a mask like they do in China because, you know, they do that there in China and in Japan because the air quality. And in Japan, I'm surprised they're still fucking alive with Fukushima going off. But uh, so we find out that science has been wrong because, you know, I always heard that if a, there was a nuclear accident like, like that, you know, fucking movie with, you know, Jane Fonda or whoever the fuck it was in, you know, Three Mile Island incident. I can't remember what it was called. Melt, some meltdown fucking movie or something like that. You know, that, that you know, that the city would become a, a ghost town for, you know, 3,000 years or something. And yet here, you know, Fukushima is like one of the worst nuclear accidents ever. And uh, they're still alive. So, you know, once again, science and their gloom and doom was fucking wrong not saying it wasn't bad but it was fucking wrong um so they're doing that with the, with the covid thing now too you know it's it's just you know making things worse than they are for god knows what fucking reason so 
I, I'm I'm pretty well burned out, you know, to, to answer the question, no. Uh, I haven't, you know, what I really think is that, like I've said in, in all my podcasts, you know, we're fucked. And, and we just don't know it. And, and us that do know it are just fucking screaming in the wind and it doesn't really matter. Um, one last thing, you know, I uh, one of my friends I was talking to, he pulled up at the ball game the other night and uh, he was listening to some podcast. He goes, yeah, I, I listen to my political uh, information from this podcast. And uh, and I go, oh, you know, and he, he commented that, you know, I have a podcast. He goes, but you're, you're, you just uh, podcast about prepping, right? And I go, no, it's, it's usually political because, uh, you know, uh, prepping, who the fuck cares? I mean, God, how hard is it to survive? I mean, I watch Alone and, and Naked and Afraid, and these fucking yo-yos pull it off with very little training at all. I mean, most of us had that much training. So, I mean, if you can make it 21 days or 40 days or 100 days like the new Alone, you know, um, or even, you know, it's, most of them are still there after 30 days. It's like if you survive 30 days in real grid down shit hit the fan fucked up situation then odds are you're going to make it you know another 30 days and and every time you reach that goal you you get better and better at what's going on around you and pretty soon you're just you know a fucking mountain man of the past doing just fine and dandy you know and, and especially if you can't go home because it's fucking burnt down or whatever the world has ended so i'm i'm not all that who are uh, about prepping you know it's more about politics for me and and you know and that's why i tell people we, we prepare because we have asshats running our fucking nation and and there's too much at risk and and it's it's a fragile machine the way it was created you know the constitution and all that i mean it was pretty rock solid but if it's not maintained properly it could fall apart and, and crash and burn pretty easy just like a jet engine will fly you from point a to point b all day every day but you know one little bird gets sucked in there bam you're fucked so that's how we are in america so i look at it as you know it's our, our it's our political world that i prepare you know for is it's when they fuck things up you know, will they create an economic collapse, a pandemic collapse, a EMP collapse? You know, those are the things that you want to be watching. I'm not saying you can change it. I'm not even saying you can fucking fix it because you can't. But you can at least be watching just like a thunderstorm and you know, you can't stop it. It's going to fucking rain. You can prepare. You see lightning, you can cover your ears if you have sensitive ears because in a few seconds there's going to be thunder, loud cracks of thunder. So you prepare in that way and, and lightning might be the best thing because you're only given a short period of time to prepare for it. But if you're watching, then you see it's going to rain. There's a storm coming. Let's batten down the fucking hatches. Let's buy an extra case of food. Let's see if our, our, you know, tornado shelter is, you know, stocked and ready for the fucking finger of God coming through and erasing our neighborhood. You know, that's what you, what you prepare for is the unknown. And, and if you're not watching the weather, and that's how I feel with most preppers is they're in their bunker and, and they're never looking outside to see if it's even cloudy. I mean, if it's, there's no clouds, why are you preparing for a storm? And they they project so much of this doom and gloom on the things that are happening in the world. But if they were really watching the things that are happening in the world, um, they would know that there's nothing you can do about it. You know, maybe be like Shelby Gallagher and write a really good series of books on it because or, or her husband, Glenn Tate, right, you know, the 299-day series, because that's all you can do. You can be ready for the things that are happening. Shelby, I like her her take on things, because with the Great State um, series, you know, she talks about how, how the government is creating this entitlement 
the entitled class of single mothers that they don't have a father in the home. They don't have a husband. They don't have a man. They don't have a provider. They can't provide because they got two or three children. So who's going to be their sugar daddy? Well, it's going to be Uncle Sam. And what happens when there's an EMP or a crash or a collapse? They're going to turn to their sugar daddy and go, hey, um, I still have four kids. I, I, I need to feed them. And then the government will turn around and go, if you do this for us, we'll do that for you. So they have their own built-in army of foot soldiers, basically, and single mothers, um, people that have been welfare three, four generations. I'm not just talking about certain race of people. I'm talking about all y'all, you know. Um, and, and so the government has got their, their their hooks in us through these these safety nets or these social programs. And, and when the time comes, it's like, well, we're going to do, you know, a new currency. Either comply or we're not going to load up your digital card with money. And so most people that, you know, can't do shit on their own are going to be like, oh, okay, then I guess that's what I need to do is, is uh, you know, comply because that's that's what's going on. So that's how I'm looking at the world is, is you know, I'm a prepper, but I'm a studier. I'm a thinker, as Glenn Beck always used to say, which is the one thing he said that I always admired. Is He's like, I might not be a doctor, but I'm a thinker, because that's the reality. You don't have to be the smartest fucker in the room. You just have to be able to read the room to survive it, you know? And, and so, anyway, I, 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 I'm a prepper that doesn't talk about prepping hardly ever. Uh, I've done a few of my shows on prepping, but I I think um, prepping has more to do with, you know, um, being prepared for life's uncertainty and and the bad shit that's going to happen, not just how to fucking carve a spoon out of a stick. So I'm going to I'm going to wrap it up. That's how I really feel about it. It, it, it pisses me off, you know, and, and I just got a response back from the guy um, that got mad at me. He said really uncalled for comments on Cartoon Man. Seriously, I don't care if you wear a mask. No need to be a dick about it. So that was I don't know if he's a, um, a, an admin for it or maybe he's a cartoon man i don't know i don't know so i put sorry but i own a business and that is all i hear these days no facts back up this bullshit and a friend of mine is a respiratory therapist and tells me it's all bullshit which i went over with you folks but my business is slow and people are afraid to stop in even if they are only person in the store and wearing a mask, and I say that because our store is pretty big, and, and so social distancing, you know, <laughs> if they're the only ones in here, not a big deal. So if Cartoon Man wants to draw stuff, maybe some funny shit about Americans taking their freedom back and not telling me why a mask helps keep out pee, because the, the whole cartoon was about peeing on somebody's leg. It's been five months, so enough is enough. Now, I haven't read his comment back to me, which I'll do for you on air, or I'll edit it out if it sucks. Look, brother, I'm with you, and I agree. It's all bullshit. It was just a funny cartoon. I'm sick of the shit, too, and I understand what your friend is saying. Hell, I was a medic in the Army for 25 years. I know the deal. It was a dude pissing on another and that was funny yeah gotta lighten it up man all this will magically disappear in november so i i i agree with him you know i like him he's he's one of my friends on social media i've never met him but he's a nice guy and and uh and he's he's a vet and an army vet and a medic so my hat's off to him so, yeah, he's right. You know, we do need to find humor in it. And, and maybe that's, you know, just my dour mode I was in, you know, at the time. And I was just like, fuck, dude. But I, I don't think what I said was so bad. I just, you know, my comment was it's like enough already with this 
this fucking analogies of wearing a mask. It's like this. What if you do that? And you know that if you wear a mask, then there's this. And it's just the fucking analogies make me sick. So I said, you know, my analogy is if my aunt had balls, she'd have been my uncle. That's kind of funny too. So, you know, it's just, I, I'm tired of hearing it. And, and, and I'm tired of watching, you know, patriotic Americans, you know, buy into it. Now this guy, you know, he's a medic and, and he was a medic in, in, in the army. And so he's, he's probably not buying into it. He's just, he you know, thinks pissing on somebody's legs kind of funny, which I do get the humor in that too. So I'm going to leave it. But the reality is, you know, eventually you have to say enough is enough. And, and I'm not going to cut slack just because it's a joke anymore. It's just like things are bad. And, and, you know, if we were all going into battle and we wanted to joke about pissing on someone's leg and it brought up morale, great. But as far as the masses and Facebook, fuck Facebook and fuck the masses. All right, y'all. That's as far as I can go down this rabbit hole. Love you all. Hope you have a great day. and Enjoy the apocalypse. Adios. We made too many compromises already. Too many retreats. Invade our space, and we fall back. I'm your huckleberry. The line must be drawn here. This far, no farther. That's just my game.